Welcome back from the pizza mini break. Sorry, uh, it took quite some time for the pizza to come. So, yeah, I hope it was nice, or at least you all get a s did everyone get a slice of the pizza? Everyone got? Okay, that's, that's good. So, uh, I'm talking about what's new in PHP 7.3. So, who here uses uh, PHP 5? Raise your hand. Like, still on PHP 5? All right. 5.5. Uh, 5 Five, what, what version of PHP? 5.6, then what about 5.6, okay, then the other person who raised their hand, who, who, who was the other person who raised their hand? PHP 5? Okay, yeah, so 5.6, okay, still quite okay, but uh, it's already end of life, a few days ago. Then who here uses 7.0 or PHP 7? Anyone here uses 7? Uh, what, what version are you all using? Okay, okay, quite new. Then yeah, 7.2, okay, that's great. Yeah, so 5.6 is end of life a few days ago on the 31st of December 2018 and past the new year, it's 5.6 is end of life, no security fixes and stuff. Then for PHP 7.0, I think it's, uh, it's security fix only or is it end of life already? Yeah, one of those. Yeah, so I'm talking about, well, I'll be mainly focusing on the differences between PHP 7.2 and PHP 7.3. So recently, uh, the 7.3 is stable and been released to everyone. You know, so you can download PHP 7.3. So these are the, I'll be talking on three main topics on PHP 7.3. The first one is uh, the improved performance for PHP 7.3. You know, we, we had a significant improvement from uh, 5.6 to 7.0. It's, it's a big jump because of how the uh, AST parsing has been changed and a lot of things, uh, the interpretation of the code has been changed and all that. So a lot of it changed in PHP 7.0. So there, there are also some improvement and PHP is constantly improving itself. The community, the core two or three developers are still working hard and, you know, working on PHP itself. Then there's a new feature in PHP 7.3. It's called the monoatomic timer. And the last one that I'll be talking about is deprecation and support for PHP 7.3. So the first one is the improved performance in 7.3. Who, who, who here love better imp performance? Raise of hand. So I, I will assume the rest of you all just want a slow side, right? So only, only those few ones, right? OK, so. Uh, so there's been some improvement made in PHP 7.3. And you can also look, look down on this a bit, I think. There's, there's some articles on this. Uh, I, I did some research on it. I, so I spin up this uh, <coughs> digital ocean server, OK? Uh, six, I think it was 64 gigabytes of memory with uh, 32 cores. So I spin it up for one hour. Okay, I, I can't afford more than that. You see, it's, it's like one dollar per hour. So yeah, I spin it up. I I write. I wrote some scripts that uh, test certain things of uh, PHP 7.3, and I also had like 7.2 installed as well. It's like a I, I got both installed. Then I ran some tests and found out like uh, there's some insignificant improvement in the code optimization. So um, basically, there's this interpreter underneath, right, that uh, it's called the Zen op, op cacher or something that basically it turns your PHP code into like assembly, like, uh, you know, into assembly steps, right? So in PHP 7.2, uh, this, this, uh, this thing wasn't very, was really quite great, right? So there was some improvements to it being able to catch some edge cases. So there are some things that when you program your code in, like your switch statements and uh, conditional statements, if you program it in a certain way, PHP might not be able to optimize that code if you had a very bad edge case. But uh, otherwise, you wouldn't, you wouldn't experience this improved performance, right? So if your code, if you notice that your site improves, in, in terms of speed, when you upgrade from PHP 7.2 to 7.3, it means that your code is not very good, right? So 
uh, there's some in, insignificant improvement in that. Like uh, I know on the I ran it for like 40 seconds, so like it was a one or two seconds different between seven. Like of course, 7.3 would have better performance by by two seconds, right? So the garbage collector in PHP 7.3 has also been enhanced, and this was something very. The garbage collector is something that's very interesting in programming language languages. Like you know, Go has its own uh, garbage collector. Uh, PHP has its own garbage collector as well. And for PHP, we use this uh, called a cyclic uh, garbage collector. Right? It's, you can read up on certain papers describing how cyclic garbage collector works. And there's this, the the one that PHP bases on is a specific one written by some researcher at IBM. And then they implemented it, the cyclic garbage collector in 5.6 or 7.0, which uh, improved the performance by a lot. So there, there has been some enhancement made to this garbage collector in 7.3. The memory cleanup has been slightly improved. So I, again, ran some tests and found out there was like a four or five seconds difference between the memory cleanup for, and, uh, which is actually something you, you might notice. So a lot of us, uh, who here uses frameworks? Like frameworks, raise of hand. So what, what frameworks do you all use? Laravel? Laravel, okay, very common. I, I use, sorry? Oh, Code Igniter, uh, it's, it's also, I think it's, uh, it's quite okay, I guess. Uh, but but I, didn't, I don't use Code Igniter, so I, I'm not very sure. <laughs> yeah, I also use Laravel, which is like a pretty mainstream right now, I guess. So I, I use that. So uh, when you use frameworks like this, right, they, uh, especially like Laravel and stuff like that, they, are, they have the, what is it called again? The uh, you, model view controller, right? So you have the model, which is uh, active record. It's active record and the design is based on the Rails active record as well. So they are more class, basically classes based on another class and then like it's kind of a, not really a, it encourages a bit of anti-patterns, and sometimes these anti-patterns in your code, which you might not notice, will cause some quite a lot of uh, memory consumption, or even uh, you know just just a lot of baggage in your code. So when you have class, uh, so let me let me just show you a, di a diagram of a human class. For example, a human class taking apart uh, not just Laravel. So you have a typical human class down here. Human extends animal. So uh, the base class is an animal and uses a trait called uh, mammal. So you have this trait called mammal. And uh, in this trait, you have a relationships. So er everyone is familiar with traits and uh, classes. Everyone? Those not very clear? Any anyone not very clear with traits? All clear, right? Okay, so okay, in any case, if you are too shy to raise your hand, I'll just briefly explain what are traits. So traits are like, uh, it, it's kind of like a class, but you don't inherit a class. Oh, sorry, you, you don't inherit a trait. So, but you, you can inherit class, you can extend class, you can be based on an abstract class as well. But for traits, you, you use them. So the functions and, uh, the, functions and the attributes in, inside a trait can be used. So you can sort of like, Within a human class, you can use memo functions like get relationships, right? So uh, you know this is this is a this is a function that absolutely does nothing but relate. But uh, okay, this is exposing. Okay, this is stupid. Okay, I, I think I, I should have changed it to private because because it's okay. This is a minor mistake here. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, you have get relationships, which returns an array, right? Then uh, you have, of course, set relationships, which, uh, which is a, uh, what in the world? Okay, it's not a boolean, it's a array. Okay, I'll, I'll fix that. I didn't see that. So basically you set an array of uh, relationships. So within these relationships, this relationships is an array of uh, this thing here. Uh, so this, you have this class relationship, so within this class, you have a relationship name, and 
you have a relationship reference name and you have a relationship reference. So the relationship name can be parent, then uh, reference, so the reference object, which is another human, as you can see, and the reference name, so will be a child. So let's say the first one is parent, then the other one will be child. Then if the first one is a child, then the second one will be a parent, right? something like that. And then you can uh, set the relationship reference in uh, using this. Okay. Then let's talk about cyclic references between objects, which is, which is the main thing that garbage collectors have a problem with. Like, there, there is this funny issue here you have. So looking, you got to memorize a bit of the sort of what I just now said about the relationships and the human classes and objects as well. So this, you have this object here, uh, a human object, which uh, you also have another one. So the first one, you take him as a James, the second one, Andy. Then the first one will be a parent, will be a parent relationship, and then the second one will be a child. So of course the relationship name is parent, then the child one will be a relationship underscore reference underscore name. Then you have a grandparent here, which is Mary. Right, so Mary, Mary is also an object that we have instantiated. So it's the parent of uh, James. You can, you can see the relationship there. And at the same time, it shares a grandchild uh, and a grandparent relationship. So you can uh, notice the visible arrow. I think you can see a bit of the arrow there. So when, when you have a relationship between, so previously when it was just like that, you don't have a cyclic reference. So it's just a single way. It just tra traverses downwards, right? But if you have a relationship like that, that goes back upwards, you have a full circular reference, right? Which uh, if you think about it, uh, J JSON doesn't su support a circular structure. So if you were to translate all of this into array, and then print it out in JSON, you get a re you get an error saying, oh, oh JSON JSON circular reference. So when you do this kind of stuff, it's like the garbage collector will be like, okay, what, what do I even clean up in the first place, right? If you delete something in between, where do the references go, right? How do you clean up all the child references? All right, so an example of this would be like that, right? You get a public function unset relationship references. So for each, you get all the relationships as a relationship ref. Then uh, for, uh, because each relationship reference is a human object, so within the human object, you get the relationship count. So like, oh, if there's a count there, then we have to try and recurse deeper to, to so we, we, call the, we call itself again to, to tra transverse deeper. Because when you have a parent and you have a child, you usually want to remove the child then followed by the parent. So that when you, because if you kill the parent, there will be a memory leak, correct? Like, like in C, like if, if, where you do that, you get a memory leak instantly. So in this case, if you do that to the object that I, the object example I've done, it will just lead to an infinite loop, right? Everyone clear so far about how this circular reference thing works? So this is a problem for garbage collectors, right? So uh, PHP solved that, like what I said before, and implementing, implemented that. So if you have this kind of references, like inevitably, I think if you have a huge code base which has active records models that ha shares relationship, one to many, many to one, many to many relationships, eventually you might hit a point which they all become circular references to each other. And when you want to print out all these results, PH2, PHP has to handle all of this models and everything, which is a huge headache for PHP itself. And it has to clean it up as well after you have used it all. So looking at the uh, difference between uh, 7.2 and 7.3, the, there was an increase in performance speed because of how it has changed. But at the same time, 
because of this change, uh, I've noticed something was that uh, when it caught, I caught the, the unset and then I called the garbage collector to come and clean up the memory. The in PH, for my horrible code that I wrote, there was no issues with the cleanup in 7.2. Like it took 70 seconds to clean up, which is horrendous. Okay, it's, it's just a bunch of code that was horrible. But in 7.3, uh, I faced issues with actually cleaning up the memory afterwards because of how, how it has changed. It simply just say, oh, free, free cannot work. Like it just throws me an error afterwards. Yeah, so there has been some enhancement. You, you can look at the C code if you want to look in deeper as to the changes. It's actually quite uh, interesting if you have time to want to look at it. Yeah, so but I, I wouldn't dive too deep into this aspect because it might be a bit too long and boring. So moving on from the garbage collection and the improvements of performance, especially in the models, and classes and objects. We have this new feature, the monoatomic timer. So anyone here know what are monoatomic timers? Anyone? OK, I guess not. So monoatomic timers are timers that only go forward. right? So like, for example, it just count one, two, three, four, and then it keeps counting forward. So even when there are scenarios where uh, there are leap seconds, you know there are leap seconds, right? I think there was one that occurred previously, and then Cloudflare didn't handle it well, and then there was an outage because of the leap second. It caused some issues because of their routers couldn't be able to handle leap seconds. They are, they are code as well. Yeah, so leap seconds are actually very painful things. And uh, yeah, and this kind of things actually happen quite often because of how time works. We, we can't really measure time very properly with seconds and stuff, right? There's, there's always some differences here and there in, in terms of time. And of course, to resolve all of these issues with uh, especially time sensitive things like uh, databases that, are, uh, that rely heavily on timestamps. For example, Google's Cloud Spanner. Everyone heard of Google Cloud Spanner? Anyone? Okay. So Cloud Spanner is a basically a key value. Underneath it is a key value store, which is kind of like Redis, where it's a, but its primary key is like timestamps. So it retrieves the record based on timestamps and stuff like that. So it relies heavily on monoatomic timers. And uh, so they have a monoatomic clocks, in fact, dedicated monoatomic clocks, as well as GPS clocks, right? So to get very, very accurate times, right? But that's Google. We, we don't really, we, we are probably not at a Google skill. I mean, yeah. But this is something very useful. Uh, you can, for example, you can take, so mono and atomic timers are a bit difficult to use as well. So they return the number of, they return ticks based on the startup of the hardware of the CPU. So, if you want to get five seconds in uh, monoatomic time, you need to do something like that. Start HR time, you call the function HR time true, which returns to a, which return a float number, and then end time. You sleep for five seconds, but uh, do note that you know sleep functions, you know, you sleep for five seconds, but it might be slightly longer than five seconds, maybe 5.001, or maybe lesser, 4.9, something, something. So. Sleep is not a very accurate thing. Maybe you want to do, uh, maybe you want to take an average, or you can use micro time if you want. But you still have to take an average instead. And then once you get an average, you can take the five seconds in mono atomic time. And eventually, you have your recipe for creating the next future cloud spanner, but in PHP. Right, so this is something very interesting. Maybe some of you all here will be potential future users of a PHP cloud spanner, <coughs> right? And final, final thing I want to talk about in PHP 7.3 before everyone falls asleep is the deprecation and support for PHP 7.3. So there has been some deprecation for OC, OC, DC router and uh, BERT something router. 
So they are like database uh, adapters that has been deprecated and probably nobody even heard of it or uses it unless you are in the enterprise world for a very long time. And, um, but for the difference between 7.2 and 7.3, there hasn't been too much of a jump between 7.2 and 7.3 in terms of deprecation. There has been new functions such as is countable when, when you know PHP 7.2 introduced the tro throwing of errors when it's not a countable, countable thing. It will throw an error and then some code has problems. So it introduced new functions such as is countable to help help you. But in, in terms of deprecation and support, not much of a big jump as compared to 7.1 to 7.2. 7.1 and 7.2, there might be some rough edges. You might need to change your code here and there to, to actually work. Right. Then as for support wise for, uh, there, there has been, so I encountered this very interesting issue when I was compiling PHP. Uh, so Xdebug, which uh, everyone heard of Xdebug? Xdebug, yeah. So we, we all probably heard of Xdebug, but uh, we might not have com compiled PHP to experience some Xdebug issues. So I was compiling a Docker image and uh, apparently Xdebug doesn't work on uh, PHP 7.2. So you need like the beta version 2.7.2. 0 beta slash something something. Right. So uh, you need to include the specific version in order to install the specific X debug because it's in beta. So it's not. Uh, by default, it will install 2.0 and uh, 2.0, 2.6, which would fail. Right. So because it's incompatible. And yeah, so this is some something that you may, may experience if you are using if you are thinking of moving on to 7.3, which I highly recommend you do. And this is the support timeline for PHP 7.3. Right? So 7.3 is quite long until uh, you know, standard 2021. I think it's on a two year cycle release. So two years support, I mean, sorry. So as far as, I'm con as, far as I know from uh, Rasmus, Rasmus did, came down to Singapore last year to talk about 7.3 as well. So there were people asking about long-term support. Like, you know, so far you can see there's no long-term support and the PHP core team decided that there will be no LTS releases, right? Mainly because it's a small team. And you know, PHP has been, uh, has been very, very kind and uh, evolving very slowly, helping developers to move on slowly already with, um, the deprecations and everything uh, from, if you look at the change, change log and upgrading, deprecations wise, PHP has been moving very, very slowly. There has been many inconsistent stuff that PHP 5 had, right? Like there were a lot of heavy baggage from PHP 5, which uh, inconsistent things, which many people complain about. Yes, then uh, that's why people say, oh, PHP sucks and stuff like that. But you know, PHP is trying to move on from the inconsistent stage, you know, when the, and trying to evolve away from that and slowly deprecating those old stuff away, slowly but steadily, and hoping that, you know, developers adopt all this. So, you know, you as developers have a heavy responsibility of upgrading PHP 5.6 over to PHP 7 at least, right? Hopefully at least PHP 7. And, you know, eventually with uh, with the developer support from you guys, you know, we can evolve a bit faster and move. And from what I heard is that there will be uh, JIT, JIT support soon, maybe in 7.5, 7 7.4, maybe earlier, maybe 7.5, right? So you all know what is JIT just in time, just in time, yeah? So this. JIT thing is very significant because you can, with JIT, you can optimize your code to very efficient levels. And this would mean that the current PHP machine learning libraries would perform better, right? You know, like nowadays, you know, machine learning is like the in thing and hype thing right now. A lot of people use Python and stuff like that. But, you know, I, I looked at the, what is that? 
Google thing again, uh, which I forgot. But anyway, they, they have a, Google has this TensorFlow. Yes, TensorFlow, right? Is it TensorFlow? Yeah, ten, TensorFlow. So they have the Python version and the JavaScript version. So apparently the uh, Python version is still more famous, although the JavaScript is exactly the same or maybe even perform faster in certain things than the Python version. But still many people use the Python version. Like, what? Okay. Maybe it's just the ecosystem. Like, when people hear machine learning, they'll be like, yes, Python. But little did they know PHP can do it too. And, you know, PHP is intending to improve on that function as well by introducing just in time and all of that. <coughs> right. So hopefully with just in time coming soon, we'll have improved performance and, you know, maybe eventually we'll get more stuff. Right. So if you want to know more details about the PHP 7.2 to 7.3, you can, uh, I wrote a post about it. Uh, it's a bit lengthy, I think, with some stats, in interesting stats that you, you might want to read up on. And then like, I mean, it might be use useful, it might be useless, but I still think it's interesting information. Right, I, I had a lot of fun you know, doing some of the things like testing out the codes and stuff like that and reading up on, on PHP garbage collector and all of this. So it's been a very interesting experience to learn, read up on all of this. And uh, of course, it's been interesting to speak at a meetup too, right? So I encourage all of you to speak at a meetup as well, right? If you find something interesting, you want to talk about it, research a bit more than, you know, come up with it. So if you have any suggestions or feedback regarding my talk, if it's too boring, it's too lengthy, it's too, you know, or you know, you want to hear better content, like a specific topic from me, uh, you can email me and uh, maybe I, I can come up with something or, you know, or, or you just want to talk to me or discuss something. Yeah, you can always email me if you're too shy. Right, so uh, thanks for listening to my talk. Hope it wasn't too boring. Do you have any questions? Quick questions? No? Too boring? So, uh, how compatible yeah? is this PHP 7.3 to like, Apache 2 server? Sorry? The, how, how compatible is with... Uh, yeah. Oh, so if let's say you run... Um, if you run a FPM, you would definitely not have any issues, right? Like, I think as long as the Apache itself supports, like, FPM itself, I think running PHP on FPM would be compatible with almost any Apache versions, if I remember correctly from memory. But, um, of course, it's recommended that you have the newer Apache because you want to get the security fixes and stuff, right? Yeah, but generally, there's, there's no issues as long as you run PHP FPM or... Uh, otherwise, uh, not really too much. Uh, only when the issue comes, only when you are running mod PHP, right? So there, there, there will be some issues that you, you might encounter some ages if you are using certain older versions that are unsupported uh, Apache versions when you run mod <coughs> PHP. So, of course, if you if you run FPM, there won't there shouldn't be any issues. Yeah, any other questions? If not, uh, thanks for listening. Hope it was enjoyable.